Hi, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over creating CSS screen tips. So basically I've got a little navigation menu here. When you mouse over these I want a detailed description of those hyperlinks to show up on the right side. And then in a regular paragraph, if you move over a hyperlink, you'll get a little screen tip a little bit below and to the right of whatever text happens to be the hyperlink. So that's our plan of action. Let me close that. This is the page as I have now. It's in a very raw form. Let's check out the HTML. So I've got a web page already set up, and let's cut. And there's no styles. We'll work on the styles mostly in this video. And let's kind of see what I have going on here. I've got a heading one. I've got an unordered list navigation menu. Now I've already got some list items and hyperlinks set up. Notice, for instance, that my list items contain a hyperlink. Okay, there's my hyperlink, and within each hyperlink, after the normal link text. I've got a screen tip, and that screen tip is encased within a span element, closed within a span element. So I've got regular text, page one, and a spanned screen tip all within the anchor tag. And I've got that in several places. I've got a couple that are shorter just because I want to experiment with some larger screen tips and smaller screen tips. So here we go. So there's a list item, anchor tag, the text that people are going to be able to see in the menu then the screen tip, the span for it, closing anchor, list item, and so forth. Now the paragraph is very very similar. So a paragraph has a hyperlink of text which includes of course the span with the screen tip. So I have a screen tip for my first link, then I have a much smaller screen tip for my second tip there. And notice for this one too I wanted to use some longer text. So that way we've got short text, long text, so that'll take care of that. So we've got hyperlinks within paragraphs and we have hyperlinks within a navigation menu and that's what we want to manipulate here. So starting off, here's what I've got. No CSS at all. So let's get to work on that. I'm going to use internal styles on this one and I'll make this uh, this web page available online. There'll be a link in the description, the video description, so you can just go grab it and check it out that way. I'm going to start off with some basic CSS though. Basically I just want to clean a few things up. So I'm going to go ahead and do a, a basic reset rule. Okay, This reset rule will take away the default margins and paddings. It's a good first step into making things look consistent in all the different browsers out there. So I'm going to go ahead and set all margin and all padding to zero pixels. So that's my reset rule. And then I'm going to do a few things to the body of the page. And these first few rules that I'm doing, the reset rule, a rule for the body, things like that, they don't have functional significance for these screen tips, but they just kind of make the page look a little bit better so that we can uh, kind of appreciate what is happening. So in the body of the page, I'll go ahead and set my font family. Good old Verdana. There we go, like bluish purple there. Um, I'm putting a padding of 20 pixels on the body of the page because up here I took away all of the padding. So the reset rule takes away all the margin and padding from all elements and now I'm kind of putting it back specifically where I want. There we go. And that's pretty good to start off. So let me just go ahead and save this. Oh. There we go jump back over to my browser, refresh, and there we go. So this is what I have so far. Um, and we'll start to clean this up. Now I'm going to work on, let's see, let me just do a little bit of formatting here. Um, I don't want to do too much with my navigation menu yet, but I do want to make sure that my navigation menu is kind of separated. I'm going to work on the paragraph first, I think. But let me go ahead and for my navigation menu, just so we can help push it away a little. I'm going to go ahead and set its width to about 300 pixels. And I'm going to give it some margin of 40 pixels all around. And for now, I'm just going to do position relative. More on that in just a bit. Okay. And if you've seen any of the other position tutorial videos, this will start to, hey, that'll probably a little light bulb was going to go off a hey, position relative there. 
So let me just go ahead and save that. And now let me focus on this paragraph. Okay, I'm going to start off with my paragraph. And I'm going to go ahead and set the width to 200, uh, to, I'll do 400 pixels. Really just so it's a little bit narrow and it'll display better in my screen recording. And I'll do a little bit of text indent because I don't usually use that property. I'll look, two M's. Okay, that takes care of that. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the hyperlinks that are currently in my paragraph and I'm going to get rid of their underlining. And let's see, I'm going to hold off. There's a couple more things I want to put in here, but I want to make sure we got the concepts down. So I'll take care of that. And this part is going to be pretty important. Okay. Now remember, this is a descendant selector. My spans within my anchors within my paragraph. Okay. Don't forget, my paragraph has a span element. There's the span element. It's contained within a anchor tag, and my anchor tag is, of course, in the paragraph. So basically, I'm specifying my paragraph links, not my navigation menu links at this time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set display none. Okay, that's going to that's going to hide that text, and we'll see this happen. So let me jump back over to my browser here. So notice, let's just focus on the paragraph here for a moment. For a moment, I see I've got my hyperlink and my span screen tip is displaying automatically as part of the anchor. Here's my long text hyperlink. There's the screen tip. When I go ahead and refresh, that goes away, and of course my paragraph is narrower now and it's indented. But really, that span, you know, display none is getting rid of those spans for now because I only want those to show up when I hover over my links okay so back over onto the markup okay I'm gonna create a new rule and this is gonna be within my paragraph a colon hover span okay this is another descendant selector using a pseudo class so the span elements that are within my hovered state hyperlinks within my paragraph. This is where we're going to have a lot of different declarations. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with display block. You remember by default my spans are going to be set to display none. But when I hover over them I want them to display as block elements. Now my position is going to be absolute. Now this is going to be a little bit weird here, but let's th so let's think about this. I'll just go ahead and end this for a moment. Position absolute. From my previous videos, you remember that if you position absolute, basically it's going to position based on the body of the page. You don't really ever want to do that though. So when you use position absolute, you want to absolutely position an element, in this case span, that's within a positioned parent container. Okay, and that's often going to be position relative. So I'll absolutely position something within a relatively positioned container. Well, my span is contained by my anchor. So I'm going to head back up to my anchor and I'm going to do position relative. This means when I position my, t my screen tip, it'll be positioned in accordance to the anchor tag, the hyperlink itself. Now, so that we can really visualize this too, I'm going to put a thin border um, to pick solid green for now. I'll get rid of that before we're all done. But I really want you to see where these anchor tags and where the screen tips are going to display in relation to those anchor tags. And of course, when you do a position absolute, you have to tell it where to position. Let's start off by doing this. Let's position it from the top 10 pixels and from the left and we'll do 10 pixels there too. Those aren't going to be good numbers to, to continue with, but we'll start off from there. In fact, let's see what's happening by, right now. It's not going to look too pretty, but... Okay. So there's my hyperlinks. They have a green border around them. And when I mouse over, you can just see the screen tip showing up there. See, it looks a little sloppy, but things are starting to behave the way you're would exp the way you going to want them to behave. So back over here, let's do a few more things to make these screen tips stand out a little bit better to us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a background color on here. It's a light shade of yellow. And let's see, I'm going to set the width to about 80 pixels. So I'm going to make a little box, okay? And I'll put a border on that box, one pixel solid, and uh, let's just do a 
black, it's fine. And I'm going to set the font size. Actually, let's see how this looks now. Things are going to already look a little bit better for us. Okay, there we go. There's the screen tip. Okay, notice my screen tip text. You can just barely see this, but my screen tip text is indented. Okay, just like my paragraph is indented. Okay, well, I don't really want that to happen. So back on my CSS, text indent, zero pixels. Okay, or zero M's. I can do that because I think I used M's to indent before. So I'll do a text indent of zero M's. I'm going to make the font size a little bit smaller. I'll do a 90%. And let's see, how about the, I'll, the color of the text? I'll do that as black. So I'm going to save these, refresh. There we go. So things are looking a little bit better. Now, this is an important concept. Notice as I hover over each of these screen tips, or I'm sorry, each of these links to display the screen tip, the screen tip is displaying 10 pixels from the top and 10 pixels from the left of the hyperlink. And that's a little bit more obvious since I have a border on there. 10 pixels from the top, 10 pixels from the left. Well, I don't really want it to appear there. I want it to be a little bit more to the right. So my next course of action will be to start to play with some of the positioning of these screen tips and then we'll start to clean it up. I think what I'll do, I'm going to go ahead and pause here and we'll finish this up in a second video.